My name is Eric Rosenbaum, and I'm part of the Lifelong Kindergarten Group. My name is Todd Farrell. I'm in the uh, Biomechatronics Group. My name is Nadia Peek, and I'm in the Center for Bits and Atoms in the Physics and Media Group. My name is Daniel McDuff, and I'm in the Effective Computing Group. My name's uh, Ben Weber, and I'm in the Human Dynamics Group here. My name is Micah Eckhart, and I'm a member of the Affective Computing Group. I'm Joey Ito. I'm the director of the MIT Media Lab. The MIT Media Lab is somewhat of a unique place. Most of the work at the Media Lab is what we call undirected research. Students and faculty do whatever they want to do. Sometimes they don't even know what they want to do, but they figure it out as they go along. Mistakes and failures are really important parts of the process of inventing and learning. It's about trying lots of things out. A lot of what we do at the Media Lab is about passion. There's a lot of very innovative stuff that's going on here. So right now, my work is focused on making Brain adaptive robotic prostheses. The current project that I'm working on with another graduate student, Jay Silver, is a project called Makey Makey. Um, here's the Makey Makey. This is an invention kit for everyone. I'm looking at a completely different way of assembling circuits. My work right now is a uh, you know, completely focused on the development of assistive and learning technologies for people diagnosed with autism. So a lot of what I'm working on is using sensing technology to understand how people interact and behave in the workplace. I'm looking at ways that we can measure people's responses to media, particularly online. This combination of art, science, uniqueness, impact, and magic, and this antidisciplinary, undirected research nature, I think makes the Media Lab um, pretty unique among institutions. Technology is something that is increasingly opaque and about consumption, and we want to empower everyone to create new things. Somebody in the world needs to be exploring spaces that are uncharted, unplanned, and undirected. What are the, the different ways of interacting, the different ways of behaving that actually make people collaborate effectively? And the, the developments we make in one area will um, transfer over to, to others. In particular, the advancements that have been made in mobile technologies and web-based applications and social networks uh, provides, I think, uh, unique opportunities for us to address some of the specific social um, aspects of uh, autism. It's very easy to make technologies that are opaque, that have a black box containing some functionality that you don't need to worry about. And we like to create systems that you can open up and explore the insides of in order to go deeply, learn more, and express yourself more powerfully. Transparency is, is critical. Because by being transparent, people are going to be able to collaborate around thinking about new ways you could use this data, about new opportunities that otherwise just a small group of people are not going to be able to think of. We're dealing with technology which could be intimidating. There's a lot of privacy issues. These are things that I think people that are making long-term plans should really be thinking about. And that's why a lot of companies come to the Media Lab, because we are their peripheral vision, we're their antenna. Thinking about open solutions, thinking about engaging the whole community and sustaining the solutions is really critical for certain types of problems. It should be about working together with entire societies. And so you don't want to build high walls and wide moats. You want to level the playing field and help as many people as possible. The artifacts that I make are not going to make an impact. It's only if other people are able to take those and use them in ways that are useful for them and their communities that they're going to be relevant at all. The thing that we're doing is enabling people. It's about making tools for empowerment.